before this time. Yes. Thank you, sir. At an award-winning cottage industry in urban Gambia, workers begin the process of turning granite shells into briquette for cooking. It's a mechanical press. It takes the granite shells, heats it up. It goes through a very, very hard press that's hitting about five times a second, and uh, it glues together. We don't add any, any glue or any binding materials. It's basically taking something small, uh, something big, large, but light, and press it into a small, harder object. By doing that, it becomes more efficient to burn it than to just burn it loose. The idea is the brainchild of Tony Tabal, an environmentally conscious entrepreneur who grew up around groundnuts as his father used to trade in the commodity. I used to play on groundnut heaps that my father used to sell. Um, as an environmentalist, what inspired me was uh, growing up in the Gambia. It's such a beautiful country that we grew up in. And during the time I've been growing up here, I've noticed that a lot of trees have gone Things I used to trees I used to play into when I was a young child are not there anymore. Now my children are growing here, and just to keep that beauty of what we had when we were younger, or to revive it, is one of my main my main reasons why I, one of my main inspirations really to make sure that the Gambia stays beautiful, stays green, and stays healthy. Even though the primary product from which these briquettes are made has been cultivated in the Gambia for centuries, little has been done over the years to add the required value to groundnuts and multiply revenue from the country's highest foreign exchange earner. The same story applies to the millions of mangoes and oranges that grow every year on abundant trees throughout the country, most going to waste due to lack of preservation and processing. For many years, the issue has remained a concern to the government and people of the Gambia. Despite multiple state efforts to bring about value addition in the granite industry, the ruins of which can be seen here at Saro, the situation remains stagnant. Although some granite oil, cake, and briquette are being produced, still it is not yet at the desired industrial scale. One major contribution to the industrialization process can however be found here in science and technology classrooms at senior secondary higher education and tertiary levels. Students who opt for science subjects at these schools are the Gambians who would become scientists, doctors, engineers, and technologists. And they would gradually bring about the desired value addition and perhaps turn these waves on our coastline and the scorching sunlight over our heads into a source of energy to light our homes and fuel our industrialization. The unhindered educational pursuit of science and technology students is of paramount importance to the government of the Gambia, to the extent that 2012 was declared Year of Science and Technology by the President of the Republic. The declaration of the year, it's a door opener to a series of events, activities, programs, initiatives that as yet to serve particular purposes. The high cost of pursuing university science education is a major obstacle in the way of many promising Gambian scientists. Inspired by the head of state's scholarship program, the management of Gambia Port Authority in 2006 devised a strategy to assist science students at the University of the Gambia in the payment of their tuition and other fees. Operation Promote Excellence in the Sciences which also builds and equips school laboratories, is funded from an annual fundraising event organized by the authority. The OPEX program was brought by General 
but we were now wanting to go with specificities. So that was, we were saying, uh, let's bring in another acronym with the OPEX program to support. After six years, the focus for OPEX has taken on an added dimension as outlined by the Ports Managing Director, Mondo Lanin Judah. STEM, Digital Science, Technology, Engineering, Machine and Mathematics. Science as a subject has been taught in Gambian schools for decades. It starts from grade 5 with general science. It later develops at the secondary level to include physics, chemistry, and biology. At the level of the University of the Gambia, career courses in science are for the moment limited to the basic sciences, that is physics, chemistry, biology, and mathematics. The UTG also offers degree course in medicine and allied health sciences. At the level of the Minister of Basic and Secondary Education, a Directorate of Science and Technology gives advice to the Minister on matters related to policy formulation in science and technology education. We are lucky to have a permanent secretary who is science-oriented, and that itself is giving us the leeway for us to be able to sell out our agenda as people who are concerned or interested in science education. Following the introduction of university education in Gambia in 1999, the government saw the need to add one more ministry. The Ministry of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology handles all matters related to tertiary and higher education within and outside the country. It too has a Directorate of Science and Technology in an advisory capacity. Most of the time, we fail to take notice of the natural talents of our children, or worse, sometimes see them as a waste of time. Interest in the sciences can be spotted in a child from an early age. Parents and teachers should look out for them. In a developing country like ours, role models with excellent results in science can have positive effect on young students. For 65 years, the Medical Research Council unit in the Gambia has been at the forefront of medical research in the developing world. The unit's medical director is a Gambian scientist, and so are some of the older scientists who work here. Yeah, I am uh, um, Professor Tumani Kora. I'm the unit director of the Medical Research Council unit in the Gambia. I am Dr. Fatima Tassisi Jew. I have been working for the Medical Research Council in the Gambia for the last 